In this part, we are going to discuss the relation between the substitutions which we have seen earlier and the formal proofs. Consider this uh, theorem 5.9 where you have uh, F1, P and F2, P, two formulas are given to you. And somehow you know that for sigma proofs that F1G is equivalent to F1H and F2G is equivalent to F2H. Okay? You also know that uh, sigma also proves F1G and F2G. Given these three facts, you should be able to derive sigma proofs F1H and F2H. Let's see how do we do that. So in the first step, we know that F1G is equivalent to F1H and we also know that F2G is equivalent to F2H. And we know third premise, which says that F1G and F2G is not. Yeah, so these are the two equivalences you know. And using that, I want to replace this guy from this guy. Okay, uh, it's a fairly simple idea. You just uh, apply an element three. You got F1G. Uh, you apply the definition of equivalence at step one, and then from these two, you can actually derive this. I got F1H in your hand. Similarly, you will have F2H in your hand. In a very similar pattern applies. Okay, so then you put them together using introduction and you got F1H and F2H. So you see that if I have parts have uh, something proven and then you want to replace from G to H uh, in conjunction, then I can do that. Okay, if as long as I have equivalent established somewhere. Knowing this allows us to prove something like this. If we have this kind of proof for each logical connective, then we can write down this theorem. The theorem says that if we have equivalence between two formulas and we know f of g, then we can derive f of h in, in this case i want to replace uh, take out the g and put h there right so uh, how do you this f of g was constructed using logical connectives right you have parts and you're building them together and each part has some substitution and then we will show that each part substitution works then you can build the whole thing and that you uh, do by induction and use the theorem like the 5.9 However, we will not use uh, a substitution as a rule in our proof system. This is can be proven and you can potentially use it, but the, this seems like a shortcut and it produces a lot of overhead on the proof checker. So one thing you need to understand when you write down a proof, a proof is a proof is if it is easy to check. Okay? And if you put a lot of work on the proof checking, then it's not a proof. And when you do the substitution, substitution changes a formula a lot and can potentially have a linear time cost. Okay? Why we want to have a constant time cost when each time do we the proof step. So therefore, in this course, we will disallow. Uh, so what, what will be the impact of uh, disallowing such a proof step will be like this. Okay, so, so you will not be able to derive this for example in this case you have not double negation f and i want to remove this okay and uh, which is not allowed okay so you, you play out the whole uh, e the equivalence of these two guys and then uh, build the whole formula from the parts okay and then you get the proof okay it's a good exercise to write down what is acceptable version of this proof step so we have seen a uh, proof system and uh, the problem with uh, this proof system is that it has a lot of rules and uh, we don't know if these rules are sufficient okay so do we need to really uh, uh, more rules or uh, we will see the proof uh, we will eventually prove that that this is a sufficient set of rules and uh, that we that makes us happy as a mathematician but we are unhappy as a computer scientist 
for the two very broad reasons one is the too many rules i mean uh, for every symbol you have three rules and this is this is just too many and we also don't have any algorithm when i somebody gives me a statement to prove i really don't know which rule and where to start and some of these proofs you must have seen it's just starting point is bizarre it's just suddenly says okay do this and then do that and without giving you any intuition and sense why you should do this or that so we will embark upon in next few lectures simplifying the whole reasoning process and somehow standardize things so then fewer proof rules a uh, very algorithmic way of applying them and get to the reasoning process done in a automated and simplified way